Uh, good evening, everybody. You will take your seats, please. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to this really important discussion uh, about uh, the future of our signage and symbolism at the University of Cape Town. Um, I'd really like to express my appreciation for all of the trouble that individuals have taken in uh, bringing us uh, to this particular point uh, and for the willingness that people are showing and will be showing in this meeting uh, for uh, participating in a dialogue uh, about what it is that we do with the signs and symbolism uh, on the campus. So first of all, my name is Crane Sodi, uh, and I'm a Deputy Vice-Chancellor here, and I'll be facilitating the process uh, for the course of the evening. What we're going to do um, is, in a few minutes, give our panelists here, led first of all by Sally Tittlestad sitting in the middle over there, who is going to talk about uh, how difficult questions such as these uh, uh, can be dealt with, can be approached. She's essentially going to be talking uh, to the experience uh, of, of uh, other institutions, other organizations uh, with questions such as this. She's a heritage impact assessment specialist, uh, and she's had a lot to do with some of the most difficult issues that we've encountered in the city around this question. And I need to say to you that UCT is not alone in having to deal with these kinds of questions. In the city, and I'm not going to talk about that, but in the city, uh, we have been embroiled over the last 10 years fundamentally about uh, questions of how to deal, how to work with, uh, in, in, this, in the example of the city, the question of the discovery of a slave burial ground in what is called uh, Dis District 1. What we're doing here this, this, this evening is in some ways operating in the wake of that development that had happened in the city. And I make that point simply to emphasize to you that what we're doing here at UCT is not a case which is exceptional or is by itself so distinct uh, that we shouldn't be learning from uh, uh, the experience of our other people who have been uh, ad addressing this question. Uh, and Sally will largely lead us into into the, this discussion uh, around uh, what we um, should be understanding with respect to that. Uh, to be followed after Sally, we will have short responses uh, from uh, our respondents, and they all are people who have invested a great deal of attention, scholarly attention, scholarly interest, uh, political uh, engagement with, with with questions uh, such as these. Uh, and we'll start with Owen Kinnan, and you know, Owen is an alderman in the city, uh, is an historian by trade, and will uh, uh, respond to, to Sally. Uh, he'll be followed by Nick Shepard, uh, who teaches on these questions of what to do with, with, with issues such as these. And then finally, Ramabina Mahapi, who's the SRC president, who's also been writing about these issues and uh, has been deeply involved over the last few uh, weeks. Uh, he began agitating around this question last year. Uh, just give me a second, please. I'll come back to you afterwards. Um, and he will explain uh, what the position of the, the SRC is. After that, we'll, th we'll throw the uh, uh, discussion open to the floor and, and invite all of you to uh, express your opinions uh, around all of this. I need to make the point to you that this meeting is fully and must be fully conscious and aware of the events of the last, over the last week. And so it's not as if the events of the last week are not of interest and consequence in how this, 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 this panel will play itself out. Uh, and so the, the key issue that I think that everybody has in the forefront of their, their minds is, is, is where is this process going to lead? What's going to come out of, out of this process? Uh, and I will give the Vice Chancellor an opportunity uh, towards the end to give some sense of, 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 of what management uh, in particular is, 
is wanting to, to do in relation to all of us. I, I see your hand, just, just hang on. I see your hand. Put it down, please. Okay? Um, but it's important for me to emphasize, colleagues, how we manage a meeting such as, such as this. And so, I mean, I by no means am wanting to, uh, to, to be uh, laying down for you uh, just what it is that you can and can't. But I'd like to indicate to you what a process uh, for the meeting should be. And so I'm going to make this point, noting all these hands that are going up. Okay? I'm, I'm going, wanting to emphasize the point that the purpose of this meeting here, and it's going to be absolutely crucial on the part of all of you to help me make this possible. And I'm going to put it in a sentence. I'd like us to leave this meeting with absolute confidence in the sense of what a university is all about. And to think that what we are able to do here this evening and what we will do is to give each of us an opportunity to express ourselves uh, and to hear the point of view of the other. So this, this is the fundamental objective that I'd like to think that, that all of us will walk away here with a deep sense, a deep sense of a university operating at its absolute best as a space which is fundamentally about position, counter-position, argument, counter-argument. And for that uh, to be uh, what I'm now appealing to all of you to uh, assist in, 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 in making possible. So this is, this, is, this is a discussion space. This is a seminar. And that's how we had uh, anticipated you know, how to uh, begin this process. The last point that I want to make to all of you is, is that we had planned this meeting a long time ago. This meeting comes in the wake of a long discussion about how the university ought to be dealing with this question of representing itself to the public. You know, how does a university, which has got a history, engage with its history? Okay. No, I, I perfectly agree. So I'm going to be st stopping there. I, I perfectly agree with you. Um, and and so, 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 so with that, colleagues, uh, I'm going to allow one comment from the floor, the original uh, petitioner, uh, and, and to ask her to put a position. So I'm going to say to you, it's my job to try and preserve the terms of engagement with this question as we had framed them. Instead of seeing it as a platform, and so if you're going to want that to happen, I'm, I'm going to say to you that that kind of opportunity will arise. You, you, you will have lots of opportunity to do that, and we're not going to stop you at all. The manage, management might want to take a similar position, but. The format for this particular meeting, I hope everybody here understands, is really important for us to carry through. So, so I'm going to ask... So the, sorry, this is not a formal meeting, colleagues. This is a seminar.
Are you comfortable with that? Okay. Okay, but so, so I'm quite happy to be led by 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 you in relation to all of that. Um, but the I wouldn't want us, however, to lose the value uh, of having. Uh, let me put it to you like this: the best thinking that we can have available on these kinds of questions as a way to lead it in, and that's that's how this was framed, and to have Ramabina. To, to respond. I mean, what's happening now is that you're asking that Ramabina put the response before you hear the, the, the position. Okay, Ramabina. Take notes. Uh, hello? Okay. Some audible. Tina Sizwe. Tina Sizwe. A Sikalela. A Ma bao ye ye Ma bao Ela tatua Ela tatua Ma bauye ma bauye ma bauye ma Thank you very much. Amanda. Amanda. A friend of mine once said to me, greetings to the non-whites and greetings to the whites. You know, it was a Ghanaian student who was coming at UCT for the first time. That is what he felt UCT was saying. UCT, you know, for black students, you cannot be able to identify with the institution. UCT's institutional culture, institutional symbolism is centered around a white, westernized, middle class, heterosexual male experience. And that needs to change. Culture, according to Professor Clifford Getz, is the historical transmitted patterns of meaning embodied in symbol, a system of inherited conceptions, uh, uh, inherited conceptions expressed in symbolic form by means of which men communicate, perpetuate, and de develop their knowledge about attitude towards life. 
instead of tr a, a, a true transformation or instead of true integration, black students are being absorbed into a white hegemonic culture in the institution. And <laughs> thus, denying the contribution of their cultural capital towards the institutional ethos. And that has to change. In the words of Steve Biko, at the heart of true integration is the provision of each man, each to rise and in attain the envisioned self. Each group must be able to attain a style of existence without encroaching on or being uh, thwarted by another. Black people reject the notion of being mere appendages to a westernized society. And that needs to change. You see this institutional symbolism we are not able to identify with. And you cannot tell me, <laughs> you cannot tell me that something cannot change whereas you formed it and I was not there and I was not even allowed to participate. That cannot be the case. Whose heritage are you preserving? That's the question. Who are the keepers of our memory? Yeah. Sons and daughters of Africa, who are the keepers of your memory? Since UCT is saying, we will not be the keepers of your memory. As the SRC of 2015, through true representation, we seek to strive to, we seek to strive uh, to drive a stronger transformation agenda by influencing and reshaping social consciousness and the institutional culture to promote equity, inclusivity, sustainability, and academic excellence. Our vision as the SRC is striving for a sustainable and progressively transformative Afrocentric university. Because wherever you walk around the UCT, it is very much Eurocentric, and that has to change. We, as black students, as African students, need to be able to identify with the institution. Whose heritage are, you, are we preserving? What about the Kwais and the Sans, which former, Tabum, uh, former President Tabon Begi described as whose desolate souls haunt the great expans expansions of the beautiful Cape? They who fell victim to the merciless genocide our native land has ever seen. They who were the first to lose their lives in the struggle to defend our freedom and independence. They who, as a people, perished in the result. Who created the symbolism? For whom? For what? For too long, the narrative at this institution has silenced the voices of the non-white students and the non-white history. This university continues to celebrate in its institutional symbolism figures in South African history who are and undisputedly white supremacists. Who are the keepers of our memory? A people without the knowledge of their past, origins, and culture is like a tree without roots. That was said by Marcus Garvey. Sons and daughters of Africa, who are the keepers of your memory, the guardians of your souls? Who are the keepers of your memory, the guardians of your souls? Will our children ever know of the great people who contributed towards UCT's development. I'm talking about Achima Feji, who was a political activist and a professor of anthropology. You know, I'm talking about people such as A.C. Jordan, who was a novelist, librarian, a, a, a literary historian, you know, the internet, a, an intellectual pioneer of African studies in South Africa. I'm talking about people such as Hamilton Naaki, who helped Kiss Bernard have the first heart transplant. Will our children ever be able to know about those people? Why is the university not saying something about these people? We need to be able to see an expression of our values and our aspiration within the institutional culture and symbolism. Will our children ever be able to know about people such as Richard Rive, you know, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, you know, so, 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 there are still a lot of, you know, excellent, brilliant academics or people who have contributed to UCT's development, but then they will never be acknowledged because some of them were just cleaning. So because you are a cleaner, you are not, you are not worthy of a recognition. What are we saying? 
transforming the, uh, uh, the, the signage and the symbolism will enhance and enlarge the meaning of social change. Our intent is to enhance the social cohesion in the transforming of learning and living spaces by, embodying, uh, by employing uh, 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 symbolic markers of change. If we are saying that we are really truly committed to reconciliation, we need to be moving in this process. We need to come in together as the UCT community and people from the outside in saying that something must change. We have been here for a long time. Why has the institution not, anything, not done anything about the institutional symbolism? Why? Who are the keepers of our memory? Sons and daughters of Africa. Who are the keepers of memory? Trans sons and daughters of Africa. Franz Fanon said, when we revolt, when we revolt, it is not for a particular culture. We revolt simply because, for many, for many reasons, we can no longer breathe. And we have come to the time where students can no longer breathe in this, in, in, in this culture. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winds of change are blowing through UCT. The winds of change are blowing through UCT. All that needs to be done from our side is we need to set sail. We need to set sail. Our institution should cease in saying we have done much for transformation. Undeniably, it is our very own nine white brothers and sisters who we advocated for to occupy these positions of leadership, thinking that they will change the system from within and raise the issues of transformation from within. But I stand before you today in the midst of disappointment. We have reached an impasse with management and are fatigued at requesting for meaningful transformation. We have begged, we have groveled, we have pleaded with management. No more. This university cannot continue as business as normal. It simply cannot be the case. In that spirit, I cannot be participating in this. Amanda! Amanda! Yeah. Okay, colleagues, uh, thanks very much. So I'm going to take you into uh, my confidence here now, please. <laughs> so in preparing for this, we, we anticipated that this m might, might happen, right? And we thought that we should assess 
um, uh, 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 whether we should continue or not. And uh, I think we weren't clear. And so I'm going to say to you that I'd like to hear your opinions on this now. Do you think that we should carry on? Yes. Sally, you, sorry, I'm going to ask Sally to, she's, um, uh, I think, an important voice here. So I've noted these other hands. There's a hand here and there's a hand over there. Okay. Hello. Um, I apologize my, for my lack of technological knowledge. Um, my position right now is that I was invited to come and address this panel as an open panel. I have been at the student protests um, on Thursday last week and have been incredibly touched by what was said by the students, by the way in which it was said, by the value which, they, which I heard in what they were saying that should be taken forward, taken seriously and taken on by the university in, in all of its um, facets. I don't feel I feel like it would be incredibly disrespectful to a major body of people to attempt to continue right now. Um, and I think that we should ask if the university wishes to for another chance at engagement. I don't, I mean a lot of what, I changed my mind about my position when I went to that student protest last week. And I heard what people were saying, and I think that there is a real place for engagement, but I don't think that it is with the pain outside of the room. So okay. I don't know. I mean, that's just my so, two cents. So one of the issues in coming to this meeting was you know, thinking about how we would preserve, if you like, the integrity of the meeting. Um, and to avoid the meeting becoming a, 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 uh, an opportunity for uh, a rally. But what's very clear to me now, colleagues, and it's, I think, a pivotal moment you know, for the university, is how we keep this process open as a dialogue. I mean, how we preserve the capacity of people to talk and, 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 and hear each other. Uh, so it's, it's around that that I'd like to ask all of you to, to assist now in bringing us to a, 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 a fair degree. So we're not going to have agreement here in the room here at all, but to a fair degree of consensus about how we might you know, take this, this, this forward. So it really is about thinking about the, the process. Please go ahead. Sorry, just, 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 just hang on. Uh, I'm saying as long as we have one person to have the dialogue with, the dialogue should continue. That there's been a walkout does not mean that the issues have been resolved. As a member of the student body, I think important issues have been raised. I'd like to hear what management has to say on them because we are here to dialogue. Uh, the methods in which we choose to express ourselves, all the same. Uh, I don't think it's right to have participants of this uh, seminar, uh, name calling. I didn't appreciate that, uh, the, the use of the word despicable, because these are issues that are being raised from a position of pain and a, posi a position of frustration. So with all due respect, let us kindly dialogue. The issues have to be dealt with. And uh, calling for the abs uh, absorbment of this meeting or postponing it will just contribute and push to more pain and more dramatic uh, choice of uh, of protest, I think. Please go ahead. Just, just take a mic. Will we? <coughs> I 
Thank you. I was going to say, um, given what you said, you know, I, I also don't think that we should actually continue with this. The, what came out strongly from what the SRC president said, the many nuances, and, and, and the one that resonated with me is the fact that they, the students are starting to feel like they, you know, they've reached an impossible with management and you guys are not talking to them. So the best way to deal with these issues is to go back and talk before you come to this platform. You, they, they are going to keep using this platform as a way to share their grievances with everyone else. So go back, it's an easy thing to do. Go back and negotiate. You do not negotiate, and, and I think that the, the, the worst part, or rather, the mistake that people make when they go into negotiations is already knowing the positions that they've already assumed. And I think this is what happened in this instance, that the university has taken a stance, the SRC has taken a stance, it's both childish on both sides. So you guys need to listen and hear each other's stories. And if you do that, then you can give us another date, we will gladly come here and debate. We need this to be done and, and, and handled in a professional manner. We were hoping that this was it. We were hoping in the build up to this, that this would be an opportunity for that dialogue to be uh, able to, to take place. So I'm gonna give us somebody on that side an opportunity and then I'll come back to Loretta and, and, and Judy. Hi, uh, my name is Benjamin Klein. I'm a student in this university. As a response to this gentleman over here, I don't know who this they is. I don't know why we assume that the pain is out there, but I take this issue just as seriously. I feel pain and I feel that this dialogue must go on. Okay, good, good. Go ahead. Hi there. Um, I believe that the position of the students, ha um, you know, the, the students have taken the position. We know what it is the students want. What we haven't heard, however, is what management has to say about it. So, I, I'm, I'm t I, with respect to what Sari said, I believe that, you know, the pain might be outside. However, we still need to hear what UCT uh, as management have to say about the issue. And we can reach that by discussing it right here and right now. We don't have to uh, go out and set out another date now, you know. Thanks. The side here. So I'm going to take a few more comments. Uh, and uh, Floretta. And Loretta. There is. Um, could I not but think not that the... the no. The idea behind this meeting had a certain context last week. That changed fundamentally. And it, and it brought into this room a big gorilla. And this meeting started with this gorilla in the room that we did not address. And so there is no way that one can now have a conversation because that gorilla is still in this room. And so, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with the sentiments that we need a response. From, from management, and, and to that extent, I think this may be the opportune moment, but, but to have a discussion with half of the panel missing, I, I think, yeah, it, it's not going to, mm. to still meet the needs of what we, this meeting wanted to address. Yeah, I'm, I'm very inclined to ask Max to, if he wants to no, no. say something, but, but no, 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 I won't let him say something yet, Judy, but, 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 but I'm... <laughs> But it really is about how we get to that point. Uh, how how to, that, to get to that point that you, 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 you're talking about. And, and um, you, you know, with the, particularly the student leadership having left the room here, I think it, um, that, that is an issue for me. Yes, yes Judy. Take the mic. Thanks very much. It seems to me that when this um, event was originally scheduled, it was prior to the events of the last two weeks, as the last speaker said. And at the time, I fully accept that the intention was to use the debate to deepen the discussions and the thinking and the engagement around these issues and to build an understanding within the university community of different perspectives in order to facilitate a process of decision making. But to my mind, the context started changing at the time of the first protest, and that was followed up by the student gathering. 
And I think the context is so radically different that we're now in a situation where even if, and the reason why I said that I didn't feel comfortable about the Vice Chancellor responding as management in this situation, is this event was set up as a seminar, not as an event for people to provide advice to management. And certainly not, I would imagine, for management to respond to what the students have put on the table, given that they've walked out of the room. So to my mind, in this context, we can't proceed because the very people whom we're wanting to engage with have left. And so I think it would be highly problematic. It would be sending a signal to the students that it almost was as if they didn't do what they did here, that we're not hearing them and we're not engaging with the stand that they've made. Okay. So there have been a few speakers on the side. I'm going to go to the middle. Uh, somebody at the back there wanted to speak there. Sorry, yeah. before you, Davey. Oh, sorry. Yeah, good afternoon. I, I think the UCT um, management lack huge credibility. The manner in which they handled the response to the first protest was really inappropriate. And even with respect, you know, how you've started this to respond to what's going on. I agree strongly with the last speaker that you can't continue in this format. David? Yeah, I'd just like to echo um, the sentiment that we can't continue with this uh, meeting, uh, precisely because um, some of us are claiming that we've heard the student voice. We haven't. We haven't really been listening to what they've been saying. And what you've seen now in the protest uh, that happened earlier is the fact that students are so frustrated they are not being given the platforms and the fora that they need to enunciate what they need to. And I think meetings like this are not going to work. We've missed the boat on that. What we need to go do now is actually go into fora where students' voices can be heard and management can sit and listen for a change. We've heard management's positions on things over and over and over again. I think many people are just tired of listening to management and we really need to tap in the other voices on this campus and we need to provide those kinds of spaces. Use our resident system. You've got students living on campus that you can start this dialogue with, but don't come there and speak to them. Come there and listen to them. These things are being debated at the moment. Okay. I just think the, um, the question of um, black alienation in a white institutional framework cannot be resolved in the white institutional framework. So I think the protest has happened outside this room and I think as a space of encounter, the discussion has to move outside the institutional normative environment. So I think it needs to move to the street um, where the protests happen. So I think that's where this discussion needs to take place. It needs a different kind of imagination, I think, about where this, where and how this dialogue happens. Tell us what that is. What's that imagination? Um, well, this is this is something not for one person to decide, but I think, I, I think I think this is a radical kind of politics, and we need to we need to think about it differently. Um, I think blocking a um, a period where every student is able to participate and able to hear this. This such happened on Jamie Plaza. It needs to. Needs to, it, needs to, it needs to be outside this space, which to many is oppressive in, in certain ways, that, that, that prevents this dialogue from, from happening in a way that people um, feel free to express it. Okay, smart track. Smart track, and then Jacques at the back there. I, I just want to point out that this issue is not only affecting the students, the staff, especially the spa staff and the academics are just as affected by this thing. And although we have forums, we also believe from time to time we do not get hurt. We've tried various things to address these issues, then it doesn't get addressed. So we must not lose focus about the staff because they stay here, even after some of the students have left, they stay here and they continue with what is happening. And this issue is not about the, the uh, road statue, it's about transformation in general. 
and it affects all kinds of people. Uh, thank you, Chair. This, this gathering is a, I mean, as some people have said, it's meant to be a seminar. I don't think it's meant to be a holding management to account session. What the university does best is slow and careful deliberation on issues. And I think that's what this meeting was gathered for. Okay, the word slow is, of course, ambiguous. Sorry, please, that's colleagues. Point. I'm going to ask you, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, please. Sorry, I'm, I, think, I think the last comment that, that, that Jacques made, I'd like to say to all of you, we really have to try to make happen. So even if you think it's, 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 it's outrageous, I think we've got to try and institute that. I mean, what else have we got? What else? Yes, but how are you going to do that? So that's what I think we're asking all of you now for help with, please. Just, just in conclusion, I mean, there's the, uh, there are various things that one could do. We need to make sure we do the right thing, and that does require some thought, and it does require some discussion. And there are many students still in the room, and the fact that some students have chosen not to participate is not an argument for the illegitimacy of the meeting. So I think we should proceed. Okay. I'm going to give Jan an opportunity there, and then I'd like the three colleagues who have had their hands up for so long to have an opportunity to speak. Yes. Hello, thank you. I'm Jan Glazewski. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Judy Favich's comment earlier that this meeting should no longer continue. But I, if I'm correct, I did hear the SRC president say something like, I'd like to talk to Max Price. So I saw a little light in the tunnel there that, and I suggest what went through my mind is that a small committee be created with people in this room, including Sally, uh, to ask the SRC president and that group as to how they would like this to go forward. Thank you. Okay, so let's take the, the, the three comments there and um, I'll give you the opportunity to, to make, make a comment too. Uh, Chair, just to assist this meeting, uh, the demonstrations which was done by the students uh, clearly, clearly sent the message that the students have no faith in management, particularly concerning this issue. Uh, and where does the good faith not come from, or the lack of good faith uh, come from, rather? It's the fact that a meeting is called while many students are still in lectures, and times have been changing, sw uh, switching and swapping, and we are not able to so fully commit to be here. Secondly, a conversation about transformation cannot go on while there are still charges pending against a student who, at his own right, uh, instigated that the type of level that this conversation is to happen at right now. So before we can engage in good faith with management, we already, already ask that those charges are withdrawn and those investigations are put to an end immediately because we cannot go on and negotiate and talk in good faith while one of us is still uh, sort of facing prosecution of some sort. And injury to one is an injury to all of us. Uh, and thirdly, really, 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 uh, many of us have been in this institution for quite a bit of time. And we arrive at a situation whereby we are so frustrated, we have engaged in the topic ourselves. And we've come to a point whereby we say the conversation has gone beyond whether or not certain things should happen. Now it's a case of that we are telling management and council that this is X, Y, and Z is what we need to happen in this, in this institution so that the black child in this school can feel welcome, can have something to be proud of. And those things we have, we are willing to put on the table. But until such a time that we get a commitment from management that you will listen to us, because many a times have conversations like this happened and nothing has materialized from that. We've been having transformation talks since from first year races, and some of us are doing postgraduate studies now, and nothing has happened to materialize from those conversations. So until management come up with a, sol a resolution that when we do engage with students, we will be listening on the terms of the students, as one of uh, the speak previous speakers did say, that it's time that management listens to the student and acts on what management is being told, particularly because we've seen that management has failed when it comes to transformation at this school. Thank you. Um, we, oh. yeah, there's two things that I would like to raise. First of all, the chair says that this was a platform to engage with the students. But earlier today, he was in a meeting, he was engaging with the students, he failed to, to listen to their demands. We, had, we went down to Bremner, 
and we are locked, we are treated like criminals in our own university where we pay school fees. If, if you look at four o'clock, when you came here, there were, there were security guards all over this place. How can we engage when we're being intimidated? Look, now the students are gone. Do you see any security guards here? How can you expect us to engage and fully show our views when there's a security guard on, on, on top of me? We cannot engage when the university is intimidating us and treating us like criminals. Until such a time, <laughs> until such a time, the university is willing to listen to us on our terms and not on their terms, we will be able to talk and we, we can be able to talk freely between, because this is not only the, the students' issue. The workers have been talking here. And can you please the university, can we please with you? Because throughout this protest, we have never beaten anyone. Throughout this protest, we have never beaten anyone. And I do not understand why, if we have never used violence, why then must we be looked after by security guards? And until such a time that stops, then we will be able to, to, to engage with the, with, the, with the whole of university freely so that we are not afraid of what we, we, we're going to say because the next thing that the security guard is going to beat me up when I get out as if I'm in parliament. So, but, but colleagues, that I, mean, I think is a really provocative thing to say that the university is standing by ready to be doing that kind of thing to you. It's not true. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, this is... Yeah. No, okay. I, yeah. No, so look, I'm the, going the, to say yeah. to you that it's not true, right? Look, look, it's not true. Well, we, it's not we, true that the security people are here uh, standing ready to well, man whether, man whether, Look, whether, whether it's... Shh. Okay, whether, just hang on, just hang okay. on. Shh. Whether, whether, Shh. Just, Russell. Whether, yeah, whether, whether, it, whether it's true or not actually is, is, is not the issue. I mean, what, what this... What this uh, what has actually happened here is actually pointing to something a lot more fundamental and, 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 and quite sad in a way, in that we can't even have a discussion. Okay? That's what it's actually pointing to. And the reason that we, we don't even seem to be able to get to that point is because there's so much distrust. Right? That, that, that no side, and their sides here, that's the unfortunate thing as well, that it's becoming quite divisive, uh, seems to trust the, the, the other side, their, their bona fides, uh, or, their, or their commitment. Uh, and so we can't even get to the issues. Right? And so on, on the one side, it's, 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 it's the, 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 uh, the sort of politics of, of, of a walkout. And in this side, it's, 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 it's a dialogue to some extent almost you know, amongst uh, ourselves. So what I actually propose that we try to do, and I don't know how we do it, but what we have to do is we have to create a basis where we can restore some trust. Mm -hmm. Where there's got to be some way in which we agree of what we're going to talk about and that we agree that we are going to talk to each other uh, about these issues. But we cannot kind of go around, you know, counterposing the issues without building some basis for trust. And I think that's a responsibility in the part of management because management has the role of managing the institution. And it's also the responsibility of the part of the SRC that is represented in important constituency and, and every other constituency in the, in the university to create some basis for us to, to, to move forward where we have a, a greater degree of trust amongst okay, ourselves. Okay, so I'm not going to take any more comments. I'm going to ask just what your feeling is just in relation to the way in which Russell has put it there now and to uh, get a sense of you. Do you agree that that is what we now should be concentrating on? Uh, that that it's, it's, it's our primary task now to find a way in which uh, the terms of that, that, that dialogue uh, can, be, uh, can be facilitated. Uh, and to, on, on that basis, uh, say to you that uh, I think that the most important uh, assessment then of where we ought to be going has been made in relation to that and, and to unless anybody else would like to say anything absolutely different to ask that we bring the meeting to a close yes Sally I don't want to say anything completely different but I am, a, I am an outsider to UCT and what 
I am seeing very, very clearly here is a very strong student body who have come together around issues of non-racism, which we as students fought for in the 1980s. And I find it really sad that it is so, it is such an issue still on this campus. It's clearly not just students. Um, the, the student who led the protest on Thursday last week, a man by the name of Hotsi Chekane, wrote an open letter to uh, the Archbishop Emeritus, which was published in conjunction with something else that I saw um, online this morning. And my experience of the students in the last week is they are being pushy. They are. They are pushing boundaries, but they're getting attention for the first time. But what, what, the way in which that protest meeting last week was held was incredibly impressive. I was very impressed with the amount of control, with the amount of... Yes, there was some nonsense, but it was very contained. What I was shocked by, and I think that it speaks directly to the issue that the students are raising, was the unbelievable hatred in response to Chutz's um, open letter. The responses shocked me. And I didn't actually see them. Someone just told me some of them. And I think that if, if that is a measure of the kind of stuff that is going on, and it's not just UCT, it's Cape Town in general. I'm hearing these conversations in more than one place. And I think that the as an outsider, I think that the university has a, a responsibility to deal with this in the most progressive possible kind of way, to set a tone for Cape Town on how this can be done, and to do whatever it takes to find a way forward. This is the oldest university in South Africa. Let it maintain its relevance and stand as something that all of the students that have been here can be proud of going into the future in a non-racist South Africa. Okay, colleagues. There, sorry, there is one more thing that I need to say, and I'm saying it as much to the students as to the university, in that the symbol of Cecil John Rhodes' statue, if it is to come down, there is a legal process that you need to go through before that statue can be taken down. It is protected and application needs to be made. It will involve a full public participation process, which will mean every stakeholder gets to come and have their say. Okay, Sandy. Um, yep. And so th there would be a process were that to happen. Okay. So I think I'm going to say to all of you uh, a, a very big thank you, uh, particularly in staying behind here uh, and expressing these uh, views that you have here about how we need to be uh, taking this, this, this view forward. So uh, thank you very much to everybody. Uh, we all, I think, understand what the task is, and, 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 and thanks. <laughs>